It is the most fundamental experience of all, defining our waking moments and giving rise to all that we think and feel. Without consciousness, we have no way of proving we or anything else exists. And yet, what it is and why we have it remain a mystery that some of the greatest minds have been unable to solve. start with something very ludic and simple. Many of you probably have seen this before, but uh, if you have not, this is an illusion. Uh, what's the illusion? Well, uh, you see a checkerboard, it seems perfectly fine, uh, until I draw your attention to the fact that at these locations, you have exactly the same luminance. It's the same exact gray level. But uh, of course, when you look at the whole checkerboard, it looks like there's one gray, dark gray and one light gray cell. So what's happening here? Well, if you look carefully now, you'll see there's a sort of shadow. Of course, it's just a dark part in your retina, but your brain treats it as a shadow, thinks that the light comes from the right side, which is compatible with this brightness here, and there's a cylinder that casts a shadow. And so what your brain is doing is removing that shadow before letting you see the scene in 3D. It's also thinking that these are squares, by the way, where well, they're not square at all. Um, and uh, the point here is that consciousness is the result of a long series of computations. What we are aware of is not the raw image, of course. What we are aware of is a subjective feeling, uh, which results from computation. Um, and um, another point also is that even a machine would probably experience the same illusion. If you wanted to design a machine that gets to the heart of things, what reality really is like, it should really recognize a checkerboard here and would uh, therefore be submitted to the same illusion. In fact, more and more we think of the brain as a good Bayesian who is able to uh, create uh, accurate uh, inferences about the external world and that would fall to this sort of illusion. So these two messages, uh, that consciousness arises from a long series of unconscious computation and that even machines could have it, uh, will be a theme in my uh, presentation today. First, I will tell you about uh, some of the contents of this first book, Consciousness and the Brain, and uh, new data to suggest that basically I think we begin to understand the basic operation of conscious access, how we perceive something in the external world. We have identified signatures of consciousness and we're progressing in this respect. They are shared between animals and uh, humans. And uh, we are guided by a theory, the Global Neuronal Workspace Theory, and the data so far seem to converge rather nicely. Um, but in the second part of my talk, if I have enough time, I would like to tell you a little bit about new ideas that I developed in the second book, how we learn, and I developed this second idea that the contents of consciousness may be different in humans, they're richer in humans. Um, we possess a language of thought, which leads us to unique competencies for language, for mass, for music, conscious representation of ourselves and others. And uh, we'll try to show you, therefore, that these are abilities that uh, require specific models. Um, in terms of AI, this is really a neuroscience talk, I think, but here is where AI is going to come in. First of all, it's used as a tool in order to decode brain signals and to classify patients with disorders of consciousness based on the signatures of consciousness. And second, uh, it's used uh, as a potential model. I think it's achievable to model the global neuronal workspace, and we've just heard from Josh Bengio about this. But um, I will also claim that the current AI remains limited its ability to capture human behavior and propose some challenges that I think are not met, at least so as far as I know, uh, from uh, simple uh, current neural network approaches. We are not passive exhibitors of visual or auditory or tactile images. We have selves. We have a me that is automatically present in our minds right now. We own our minds and we have a sense that it's every one of us that is experiencing this, not the person who is sitting uh, next to you. So in order to have a conscious mind, you have a self within the conscious mind. So a conscious mind is a mind with a self in it, the self introduces a subjective perspective in the mind, and we are only fully conscious when self comes to mind. So what we need to know to even address this mystery is number one, how minds are put together in the brain, and number two, how selves are constructed.